leading this workshop this evening, we have Christopher Miofsky, who serves as the Assistant Director of Student Involvement and Development at Washburn University, and our friend Robbie Maples, who serves as the Assistant Director of Student Conduct and Community Standards Education at the University of Kansas. Without further ado, I will go ahead and turn it over to Christopher and Robbie. Well, good evening, friends. Um, as Ben said, my name is Christopher Miofsky. I serve as the Assistant Director of Student Involvement Development at Washburn University in the uh, major sprawling uh, metro area of Topeka, Kansas. Um, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Go Cardinals, go Blues, and go whatever our soccer team is going to be called. Um, I did my undergraduate at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville and my graduate work at the University of Missouri, St. Louis both partner campuses for Sigma Tau Gamma. We're very proud of that. Uh, I am a member of Delta Lambda Phi fraternity, so I am not a member of Sigma Tau Gamma, but I am very honored to be considered um, one of the friends of Sig Tau. And then down there at the bottom, you can see my five top strengths for any of you who have done the Clifton strengths. And my co-presenter today is none other than the amazing Robbie Maples. Oh, oh, shucks. Thanks. Thanks, Christopher. Uh, yeah, Ro Robbie Maples here, Assistant Director for Student Kind of Community Standards Education. Um, from the, uh, uh, I, you know, thriving metropolis rural area, uh, you know, of Okemo, Oklahoma, originally uh, here in beautiful Lawrence now. Uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately for me, Sigma Tau Gamma was not at my alma mater at Oklahoma State University, but uh, thankful that I've had the opportunity to become a, a friend of SIGTA and, and volunteer in, in, in various roles. And so, yes, farmhouse, uh, I'm an alum of Farmhouse Fraternity, was on staff a little while where I got to know uh, a lot of past members and, and uh, headquarters staff of Sigma Tau Gamma. And so we're ready to get started. I don't know about you, but let's, let's kick on, uh, talk about what we're going to actually speak about today. So you're yeah, going to go through these learning objectives like a good lesson, uh, you know, like, like we like to teach um, each other. So we're going to learn about today, we're going to uh, be able to have a greater understanding of organizational and personal values. So not only yours, but the values of Sigma Tau Gamma and your chapter. Uh, we're also going to learn uh, about having a greater understanding of campus and organizational growth uh, for your personal growth. And we're going to be uh, going to find that appreciation for the big why or why we do what we do. Why do we join Sigma Tau Gamma and why Sigma, Sigma Tau Gamma can build another generation of noblemen uh, as fraternity members on your college campus. So before we get started, though, uh, we, we want to kick things off with a little video. So enjoy. Deep down in your heart, you know that you're not living to your potential. And life is now something you're just getting on with. I look around at people so often, they're so unhappy. And I think the reason is that they don't ever win the game of life. It's a game they feel like they can't win, like they're always losing. And the reason, number one, is they don't know the purpose of the game. That's why people wake up in a rut. Their life has no purpose, no meaning. They, they're not morning people. I'm just not a morning person. You're not a morning person because you, you're not living in your purpose. See, you hate waking up because you're waking up and you don't know the reason. You're waking up and you don't have no design in mind. Just stop and think about what's most important. Think about why you're here. You are here for a reason something for you to do and be here. Take a look at what burns on the inside of you. You've got to find what you love. What burns in your heart is important for you to pay attention to because it never goes away. Start to realize there is something inside of you that is never ending. That there's something inside of you that is unchangeable. That's the part of you that knows what is right, what to do, and why you're here. The 
only way to be truly satisfied is to love what you do. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. The most stable thing that a man can do is to listen to his heart. But you see people successful soaring by, and you want to soar. But you got to jump. dying to do what is your true purpose on this earth the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you learned why Who's ready to run through a brick wall? Let me tell you, I feel like, you know, after watching this video, every time I feel like Rocky at the top of the stairs, like, yeah, that's how I feel right now. Um, so uh, with, with higher education, there's always a theory, uh, and we always have to talk about and digest a theory uh, behind a certain, uh, you know, set of things. And so Today, I, I see Eric and I see Peter. Have you have you heard about the Golden Circle before? Have, have you? Yes, I have. Okay. So as as we talk about the, the Golden Circle, right? Uh, a very very smart uh, fellow named Simon Sinek um, talks about uh, breaks down the differences between the what, the how, and the why, and so. As we, as we go inside the circle through the layers of the circle, we learn more about, you know, what drives us and what, what drives the organizations and what we're involved in. And so uh, an easy breakdown is on this left side, so the what. So what every organization on the planet knows what they do. So like Sigma Tau Gamma, right? We, our what is we build noble men, right? How, how do, how, think in your mind, how does Sigma Tau Gamma do that? You know, they, these things that make them special set them apart. So on your campus, that could be, we have the highest grades. We believe in giving back to our community. That could be through uh, financial or service. You know, those are some things how you build that noble generation, noble men in, in your organization. But sometimes the most difficult thing is to figure out the why. And the why is, why are we doing something? Why, is, why do we believe in Sigma, Sigma Tau Gamma? Why do we believe in X? And it's the very reason of your existence. And it's the very reason of the existence of this great organization. Um, you know, the, the why we'll talk about our why's here in a little bit, but that makes you the, your why helps you get out of bed in the morning. That's something that you wake up and you're like, man, I smell 
the roses, I'm ready to tackle the day. Like, let's, let's do this. So uh, now we got to talk about though, why is, why is the why at the center? Why is the why at the center of the circle? Eric, Peter, why is the Y at the center of the circle? Why is the Y at the center of the circle? I believe it's because that is the core of what builds off of everything else, whether it's here at Sigma Tau Gamma or working at a company. Okay, okay how about you, Peter? Uh, I'd say it's it's your purpose almost. Um, it's why, like they said in the video, kind of why you get out of bed in the morning, like what do you want? out of life why um why you do what you do kind of yeah so great great answer so when we're talking about this why this is the foundation this is what we build off of so every house has a foundation you you build on top of that so if we start with our why then we can go into other details of the circle and then we can know the direction of which we're going to go so without knowing your why though, how are you how are you able to do the what? So what might happen if you started with something other than why? The house would fall in. Yeah. Yeah. How so? You wouldn't have that foundation of, you know, kind of uh why you exist, you know. So the house would kind of the other two wouldn't be able to happen without your why. Yeah, it could be a, you know, if you remember a tall tale when you, when you were a kid with uh, building a house out of hay or straw, right? It's easy to easy to tear down. Yeah. Okay. Robbie, I'd say for me, it's a domino effect uh, where if you're trying to build up something or have a foundation with it, um, everything like Peter was saying, it can all crumble all the way down if you don't have that stable foundation. Yeah, and so when we envision our what, if we don't have the why centered, our what can be totally different. It's it's not, you know, that would have a domino effect to, you know, change the very being of who we are and what we stand for and what this organization I know stands for. So Chris, Christopher here is going to, you know, go into, you know, what all this why business means. Let's talk about purpose. Um, you know, we talked about purpose in the video and they talked about purpose, but let's talk about it. So what are the purposes of your organization and of Sigma Tau Gamma? And let's make it interesting. I don't want to hear things like integrity, excellence, leadership, brotherhood. I don't want stuff you can regurgitate from your website or from new member ed. What is the actual purpose of your organization? Christopher, I would say for me, the purpose of Sigma Tau Gamma is to leave this world better than we came into it. When we all came in as new members, we all had the opportunity to learn from our executive boards and the older brothers within the chapter, uh, being able to fulfill those roles once they graduated. Um, so I would say for me, it's just leaving a legacy of how we can create this world and leave it more positive than we came into it. Great. Peter? Yeah, I definitely have to kind of agree there with Eric. Um, definitely having a purpose of kind of, you know, having a legacy kind of um, definitely do, uh, leaving the world better than how we found it, you know, making a pot, our purpose to make a positive impact on the world and, you know, making a future of better uh, guys. Good. So let's dig down a little bit into that uh, a little bit more. So we talked, you talked about leaving a legacy and those kinds of things. So from a little bit more of a personal standpoint, what is the purpose of your organization? What is your purpose? What do you, why do you wake up in the morning and do what you do? For me, why I wake up in the morning and do what I do is that I'm able to create positive change and influence, not just for myself, but others in our world, um, so that 
including going down the road, um, even my future wife and my future family um, can be part of the success and purpose of what I have for myself. Okay. Why is that important to you? For me, I would say that gives me the opportunity to showcase the talents and the gifts that I have been blessed with, as well as the opportunities that Sigma Tau Gamma has provided for myself. Um, I am a alumni member of the Kappa chapter of the University of Wisconsin Whitewater and Sigma Tau Gamma has blessed me with so many opportunities from not just a leadership standpoint, but as an overall man in our world. Excellent. If I can paraphrase, um, so it sounds like you're talking about um, being part of something that's bigger than yourself and giving back to that same something that's bigger than yourself. Does that sound fair? Absolutely, Chris. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Love that. Peter. All right. Um, you know, I'd say maybe my purpose be kind of um, uh, kind of stand out, um, kind of, um, you know, making a um, being a leader, kind of um, trying to make the kind of changing people to be better people in the world, kind of wanting to be remembered for someone who creates positive change and someone who wants to be kind of why um, I'd say it want to be remembered, you know, at the end of the day, after, uh, after we're all gone, someone still knows my name. Okay. So why is that important to you? Um. I guess I look at like, you know, um, I like history a lot. So, um, so knowing kind of your history, kind of, um, I like being able to think back, like I'll, I'll be remembered in the history books, you know, once I, I've left this world, I want to be remembered in a positive way. Um, okay. So if I can paraphrase kind of the idea of leaving a legacy, but also some level of immortality. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that. Love that. So let me tell you my why. Um, my why is I, I, I love talking about my why because it always reminds me as well. So uh, on the next slide, there's gonna be, we're gonna click through some photos and I'm gonna talk about each one of them. So that is me um, as a toddler on what was my favorite toy at the time that at 37 years old, I have refused to allow my parents to get rid of. Um, I will share with you that I am adopted. Uh, I was adopted as an infant, um, and it is something that I'm very, very proud of, one of my very salient identities. So um, I do it uh, for the little boy in the photo right there who had the world in front of him, um, but could have had a very different world um, had he not been uh, blessed with the family that he was blessed into. Uh, in the next photo, you will also see a photo of me in college. That is also my mom. Uh, I do it for, uh, I do it for her. Uh, I had a single mom for a very long time uh, after my parents divorced when I was a youngster. Um, so I have, I do it for her. I do it to make her proud. I do it to uh, impart the lessons on which that she gave to me. Um, that photo of us was taken in, I couldn't even tell you the year, um, but was taken at Pride Fest in St. Louis. Um, and so I also do it for the young man in that photo who needed something bigger than himself to survive. Um, my organization provided me an opportunity to lead but all, and learn some skills, but it also provided an opportunity for me to survive. Um, you know, and we can talk about that. If any of it, if either of you ever want to talk about that, we can talk about that one-on-one -on -one and I can talk more about the survival of that. But um, really an opportunity for him uh, to get through what was a very difficult time. Um, the next photo, that is a photo of my, of my fraternity um, at one of our national conventions. We all had decided to wear white that day for some reason. Uh, we were in Miami that night, but I do it for them. I do it to give back to my organization that gave so much to me and to provide that space for others coming behind for uh, an organization um, that is still deeply needed within our, our country. My organization was founded on the openness of sexual orientation, gender identity. Um, and so my organization for a long time was the only place 
uh, that people could go, but fortunately we've moved past that. And so my organization is now yet another place for people to go. Uh, the next photo, those are some colleagues from here in Kansas and Missouri and Oklahoma and Nebraska. Um, I do it for them. They are the reason that I get up in the morning and do this work. Uh, we talk every day in some fashion um, through either GroupMe or Snapchat or whatever. I do it for them. Uh, I do it to make sure that we are supporting each other because they have given so much to me and I want to make sure that I give back to them. Uh, last but certainly not least, um, well, actually two more, um, I do it for you. I love your organization. I wish that it had been uh, an opportunity on my undergraduate campus when I was there, but it wasn't. Um, though, had it been there, my path might look different, but I do it for you. I love volunteering with your organization. Um, it, is, it is truly an honor and a privilege to be considered among the ranks of friends of your organization. I do it for you uh, to impart my own wisdom upon uh, you all, but also to provide um, a space for you all to teach me about some of the new things that are coming along and ways that we can do, do this work better. And finally, I do it for this guy. This is my you. He is five. He'll be five in January. I do it for him. Um, he is the reason that I work in higher ed. He's the reason and I stay in higher ed. He's everything. Um, in that I want to make sure that when he gets to college and when he gets to the college level, that there's something for him. I don't ever want to have to have a conversation with him that's with him saying, hey, I'm going to join a fraternity. I don't want to have to have the conversation of which one, let's make sure that's safe. I want to have the conversation of him with, that's excellent, which one, let's buy you all the t-shirts. Um, I don't ever want to be in a situation where I have to talk to my colleagues and say, can I trust this chapter with my nephew? Um, I, and so for me, this work is to make a safe place for him and all the other sons and daughters and nieces and nephews that are coming up behind all of us to, to find a, a home within these organizations that we where we found a home I want to make sure that they can uh, that they can find a home and help in some little way but um, for any of you that either have for any of you that have nieces nephews children um, you will find that they will um, and if you don't uh, you will find that they will wrap you around your their little finger in a, in a moment um, so yeah he's learned very quickly that I'll give him whatever he wants <laughs> um, and as he gets older, those ones are going to get more expensive. And I'm fine with that, but um, I do it for him. And I do it for the little boy in the photo to the left so that we can continue to make this world a better place. And um, Eric, like you were talking about, the, the giving back to something that's bigger than yourself that gave so much to you. Um, I'm very similar in that way. Robbie, why don't you tell us your why? Yeah, so... Uh, like like Christopher, I have uh, some uh, pictures as well, as well. But when we go through these pictures, um, this you know this is my why on on what I do. What I do, you know, as uh, was mentioned, I work in student conduct and community standards. So you know, sometimes we we are looked at as the bad guys. But you know, I I am doing what I do to educate and in other presentations like this, so that the fraternity experience can live on. And so, as you will see, this fraternity experience has shaped me from a very nerdy, as you can tell, a uh, little uh, boy from Oklahoma that wanted something bigger than himself, going from a graduating class of 52 uh, to several thousands at, at uh, my alma mater. And so, I found that experience in my fraternity. And so, uh, Ben, if you can go to the next slide or next picture, please. This is something that I could share not only between the brothers of my fraternity, but my biological brother. Uh, in, in this picture, we're, we actually went to our uh, founding uh, father's you know, gravesite and had a little um, talk, talked about our ritual, talked about the things that, you know, why we believed in, in, in our fraternity and how we can uh, have this experience moving forward. And so this was after actually both of us were, uh, were graduated. When we talk about you will be someone's 
godfather, someone's, uh, th- this is for life. This picture right here, this is my goddaughter whose dad was all, also a fraternity brother. Uh, you build this building of brothers and, and this experience shapes who you are and how you can shape the next generation. I want this experience to, uh, for that uh, little girl to have a uh, similar experience in the future. Next, Ben. Uh, in this in this picture, you know we can see a very uh, collective group. That is my big, my little, my uh, grand little, my great grand little. That was uh, five years ago now, and so I do this work so that chain can cannot be broken. That even though we now, whew, 10 years ago, being in a undergraduate chapter, that we can still build upon what we were built upon 100 years ago in the case of Sigma Tau Gamma. And so building, building that next generation, but also building uh, bonds without, outside of your organization. You know, in, uh, in this in college, I learned how to actually, you know, talk to people other than, you know, my fraternity brothers. We were able to come together and, and uh, win a song and dance competition, something that, you know, the little boy in, in that background, that little boy would never have dreamed of opening up to others to, to accomplish that. And lastly, we, all, we always tell you, we always recruit people that uh, you're going to be in, in each other's weddings. And, you know, guys, that's, that's the truth. Uh, that's a group of guys that I surround myself with, graduated uh, seven years ago now, and, and I still talk to every guy in that picture regularly uh, because this experience, this, this bond of, of brothers um, is, is that strong. And, and, and the accumulation of these experiences helps me move forward uh, to – uh, better serve uh, you as students and alumni, but also better serve the fraternity um, experience on college campuses. All right. Thank you, Robbie. We appreciate you sharing that with us. That's, that's a really great testimonial. Um, so let's talk about uh, some purpose killers. Um, we all talk about our purpose, but Let's talk about those things that are killing our purpose. What's getting in your way? So what are, what are you doing or not doing that keeps you from achieving your purpose? This is, one, put, this is an area for open discussion. I would say for me, one of my purpose killers uh, from not achieving my own purpose is maybe not always reaching out to certain people. Um, I know that's something that I've continuously tried to approve upon as a weakness and trying to grow it as a strength, not just uh, personally, but also as a business professional in the real world now. Um, so I'd say for me, that is one of my purpose killers. Okay. Um, for me, it say maybe my inability to maybe um open up or reach out and kind of you know be able to delegate as like a chapter president um sometimes i have a tough time kind of delegating out and having that trust in um fellow exec board members or fellow brothers to be able to follow through um with planning events so kind of maybe um limiting ability to have a legacy by only relying on myself to do everything okay that's fair um, so let's push through that a little bit and, and I will share that, um, please share as you feel comfortable. So, um, some of the next couple of questions may be a little bit more, um, are going to drill down a little bit more. So please, please share where you feel comfortable. So why might those things be killing your purpose? I know, um, Peter, you just mentioned about, um, 
not delegating, and Eric, you talked about not reaching out. Um, why might why might that be killing your purpose? And why might you be allowing those things to happen? I would say for me, um, with my purpose killer, um, that's killing my purpose because not being able to establish and create new relationships with people, not just within Sigma Tau Gamma, but um, again, as a man and also a business professional in the world, I have the opportunity every day to create new relationships with not just men, but also women and everyone else throughout our world. Um, they can be in-person conversations or they can be virtual ones like we're doing right now. So I would say that's for me. Excellent. Uh, Eric, I appreciate your inclusive language in that. Thank you for, for saying men, women, and everyone else. I appreciate your inclusive language. Thank you. Oh, okay. um, Peter, anything to share? Yeah, my head's just been in thinking, so sorry about that. Nope, uh, that's totally fine. Nope. If you, if you, we can, we can come back. If you want to jump in, please feel free. Um, and if you just don't feel comfortable right now, that is okay too. Um, so let's talk about our default setting. Everybody has a default setting. Um, and that is, you know, you get, you, you, you go to one of these presentations and you say, I'm going to go out and change the world. And tomorrow you are 100%. The next day you're 90%. The next day you're 80%. And by about the third day, you're back in your default setting. Why do we think that that happens? And I asked that question a little bit more rhetorical just for you to think about what your default setting is, but why might we always default back to that? I'd say maybe because that's what you're most comfortable with. And it's kind of, um, it's hard to feel like when you feel uncomfortable, things kind of, you kind of want to shell up and kind of go back to what you're comfortable with. And you get, sometimes you have to kind of push through that wall to really have a change. Peter, you hit it right on the head. Comfort zone. That's the answer I was looking for. Thank you. Um, everybody has their comfort level. I have mine too. And I, I am, I am not here to say that I am not guilty of defaulting. Um, it's something that, that everyone does. So uh, I asked that question just to kind of have you take a moment to think about what your default setting is and ways that you can uh, push through it. But really comfort zone is, is what causes that. Uh, and so just making sure we always talk about push out of your comfort zone, which is a lot easier said than done. And you don't have to do it in a big way, just do it in a small way, um, a little bit here, a little bit there, and now you've pushed through into the bigger changes. So excellent. So let's talk about change. Why do we make change? When do we make change? And why is it that we usually wait to make change until we're forced to? I would say the first is why do we make change is to hopefully create a positive future for not just ourselves, but also the people around us, um, whether they're our friends, friends and family, uh, they could be work colleagues or they could be people we may only meet once or a few times in our lives. Um, when we want to make change, uh, we want to make it every day. Um, like you said, even if it's just a small change, uh, we get the opportunity to bring more positivity to our world. And then why do we usually wait until we are forced into change? Um, kind of going off with Peter with um, being uncomfortable with or being comfortable with the uncomfortable. I would say um, that's something that maybe we're learning throughout our lives, both personally and in our different practices within the business world, I would say. So I would say those are a couple of the key components um, involved with making change or uh, being forced to make change. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Eric. Peter, if you have anything you'd like to add? No, I, no, I think okay. I think Eric hit it pretty well. Cool. So the next question, as fraternities, do we need to change? Um, yeah, I'd say so. I think um, kind of that uh, the stigma that is out there about fraternities with, I, I definitely say in regards to hazing and stuff like that, that I just mm -hmm. don't see where that, fits into building a brotherhood for the most part and how that kind of is right. almost die. 
Yes, I would say for me, um, definitely fraternities, we do need to change. Um, one of the big things is obviously trying to be more accepting of brothers from all sorts of life, whether it's involving race, gender, or any other aspect of your person as yourself. Uh, we need to be accepting of them and loving of them. Awesome. So how do you do that? That's the harder question. We know why. We know, we know why. We know what. Now we need to know how. So how do you do that? I would say for me, it's going back to our educational programs that we have within our chapters of Sigma Tau Gamma. Or if not, mm -hmm. we have hopefully the opportunities maybe at our colleges or universities to attend maybe a Greek leadership conference or maybe something that maybe even at the national level that uh, we need to bring forward more of um, something that maybe uh, we can allocate with volunteers or different presentations, something like that, where uh, we can have breakout sessions involving uh, these sorts of topics. Right. How else? Um, I'd say kind of even uh, pers person by person, kind of, you know, if you want to see that change, be a leader for it and kind of uh, have an active voice. Um, and wanting to see change either in your chapter on your university or eventually on the national level. But I think um, it definitely, the national level is the hardest to move over. So you have to start at the university and chapter level first and getting at your university um, kind of on that first and being a kind of a leader okay. of that change. Mm -hmm. Good, excellent. Both of those are great answers. Um, you know, making sure that you're having one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with folks, um, calling out something when you see something or when you hear something. You know, we always say, if you see something, if you hear something, say something. So if somebody does something or says something that you know is problematic, pull them off to the side and say, hey, this is problematic. Um, you know, having those larger conversations, encouraging people to attend sessions like this, you know, other saga sessions, other webinars that you know. If you know somebody is, uh, wanting to be a, an astronaut, finding what, if you see a webinar come in your email about being an astronaut, making sure that they have that, you know, now I know astronauts kind of a funny example, but we see those examples every day. Um, talking with your advisors on campus, with your off-campus advisors, you know, saying, hey, I really want to get into this or get into that or do this or do that. Do you have any question, comments or, or opportunities or you know, connections. So this is how, so, you know, we need to talk about all of those things and being the change. Um, so what I want you to do um, is take a minute and think about three ways how you can be the change in your role, whether that you, whether you're a chapter leader, an alum, or an, an advisor, whatever that means. So let's take, let's take a couple of seconds um, and think about three ways that you can uh, you can be the change within your role and then we'll come back together and talk about it. So take just a second. So here's what I'll leave you with. Uh, people join fraternities and sororities all the time every year and everyone is looking for something different. Some people are looking for a social outlet, some people are looking for a professional outlet, but at the end of the day, everyone is looking for the relationship with other folks that is going to positively affect them in whatever way that means. For me, my relationships with my fraternity and my advisors were the ones that kept me going in some dark times and were the ones that uh, helped shape me uh, and my future. So I'll share with you that, again, when we talked about um, if you see something, if you hear something, say something, you don't know what others in the room may have heard or how they may have interpreted that. Um, and you know, within our organizations, I know within the organizations on my campus that for some of the students on my campus, this is their only family. And so we have to make sure that we're creating these spaces that are safe, that are supportive, and that are loving for all of our members and not just the ones that we agree with or the ones that pay their dues on time. Um, so that is what I will leave you with. Uh, Ravi, do you have anything you wanna take us home with? Hi guys. Uh, once we realize our, our why, and I, I think we've, we've talked, uh, discussed that and we found that I think there's, um, a good chance that, uh, 
that uh, Sigma Tau Gamma will be the, the leader for the future. And, that, and that's really exciting, especially as a uh, proud volunteer for Sigma Tau Gamma.